All right, let's take a look here at um, using models of service within Azure AI Studio. Now, I know that there is um, AI.Azure.com, which is the new Azure AI found Foundry, but it's weird because it's called Azure AI Studio, but it renamed it Azure AI Foundry, but it's still not called that in the main one, and that's kind of annoying. Um, and so you can go through here, or you can go through here, um, and which it should be, I, I really don't know. Um, I suppose we could explore it through this way. The other way is also easy as well. But right away, it's asking you to go create a project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way over first to Azure AI Studio. I just want to make sure I get rid of anything that I might have here. So we can kind of experience what that other page might look like if we didn't have anything. Because I think that's the first thing. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to tear down a few things um, like this resource group. Like you obviously wouldn't have this. I'm just trying to get it back reset to zero here. Um, we'll delete that. And same thing with this one. I'm going to go into this one here. Give it a moment here. And it's within the same resource group. So just give me a moment for that to tear down, okay? All right, so that should be gone now. There we go. So I'm going to go back over to Azure AI Foundry, um, which is ai.azure.com. And so I just want to see if it makes us create anything. No, it doesn't. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project here. And yeah, I don't mind whatever the name is. We'll stick with the standard. But what I find is that the location greatly varies. Notice that it's going to create a hub anyway. So, so another way to create it would be through Azure AI Studio here. And if you create a project, it would probably create the hub and the project at the same time. Here's creating the project. I'm going to go back here. And if we create the hub. Okay, it's a little bit different, but the way it used to work was you make a hub and then a project. But uh, I don't know, they're, uh, they're making it really complicated here, but this is fine. I'm going to go ahead and create this new one here. Um, but where the project exists really affects what models are available to you. So you might have to create multiple projects to get to other, um, uh, to other models. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and hit create there, which I did. And so now I'm just waiting for this to create. So we'll just wait a moment, okay? There we go. So we have a bit of UI here. Um, I don't need to get information to explore, but there's a couple of resources that get created for us. One is Azure AI services and then Azure OpenAI. So OpenAI is going to get us access to the OpenAI models. Azure AI services is going to let us interact with um, other things on the left-hand side here. Um, and I guess we have an inference endpoint, which is what we need to utilize to access things. So it did spin up a lot of things here. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have um, a bunch of interfaces here, and it's a little bit different from the last time I saw it. But where we are looking for stuff is within the model catalog. I have activated models prior to this, but when you are first doing this, you will have to go open this up and a uh, request model access. So I'm opening this up here, and I it's been a while, so I'm going to see um, if it tries to ask for model access, and it's... I already have it. So you will have to click something, fill in a form, wait a while, it could take a couple days, and then you'll be able to deploy models. So if we want to start working with things, we're gonna go over to code. Um, oh, this is different, templates and tutorials. No, 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 that's not what I want. I want um, Playground, okay? And they change the interface again here, but I'm gonna say try chat Playground. And so now we'll have to do is create a deployment. And so we need to deploy a model. So we have a bunch of models here. I'm going to go with um, chat GPT 4.0 mini. Notice that some say chat completion and then other ones just say completion. I think I said this before that um, if you're on AWS, it's like it's called chat and single prompt. If you're on um, Azure, it's chat completion. I think I said chat completion and chat, but it's actually chat completion and completion. And then when you're on uh, Google, it is... Uh, chat and uh, some weird name I can't remember, but it's not it's not normal. Um, but anyway, or it's like free flow. They call it free flow. I don't know why the naming so bizarre. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and choose um, O1 Mini. It really depends on what you choose here because some of them have restrictions on how they're deployed, and so it's not showing me much here. I'm not sure why this is slightly different. This is for chat completion. So we'll try chat 4.0. Okay, I can deploy this, no problem. And we should choose our deployment options, which is now up here, I guess. Um, so manage compute and service API. You used to, used to have to select between the two. And so I'm looking here, I'm saying, okay, where is my options? 
Yeah, they've changed this. So I don't trust this. I'm going to go back over to here in the top left corner. I'm going to go back um, out of O1 Mini. I'm just going to choose the regular GPT-4.0. Okay, if I click Deploy, what do I get? Now I get the normal UI I'm used to. So here I have more options. And uh, it has the most options out of all providers in terms of deployment options. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but they just do. So if we open this here in a new tab, it should tell us what these all are. Okay, and so you'd think that, um, uh, you know, like uh, global would be more expensive than standard, but not always the case. Okay, so here, these are pay per token. So this one, this one, this one. And so um, I'm just trying to think here. Global standard is probably pretty good. Uh, batch is something that is offline. So the idea is that you're not going to be to infer with it right away. So global standard is what I want here today. I'm not going to go into all these in great detail. I have a course specifically for Azure AI that if people are interested, they go take. Uh, and so now what I can do is go over to the playground. Okay, we can, well, I don't need to create a deployment. Hold on here. Let me just go ahead and refresh this page because we've already deployed a model. And by the way, that model is serverless, so if we're not using it, it's not costing us anything right now. And it's saying no deployment is, exists. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure I deployed something. And uh, there used to be a tab here for deployments. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. So where did they put it? Maybe it's model endpoints down here. Here it is. Okay, so this model is deployed. I'm going to go ahead and open it in the playground here. And so we have a similar interface as you would with the other ones. So let's just say, hello, how are you doing? And we'll hit run. And run again. Mm, and it's not, uh, it's not submitting for some weird reason. It's usually not a problem. There we go. Azure is uh, Azure's known for being a bit um, buggy, to be honest. Like their UI. Um, so that's not really working as I hoped. So I'm going to try this again. And now we see our deployment. I'm going to go ahead and try this again. There we go. And then it responds, OK? Um, can we get some code? That'd be really nice. There's probably a code example somewhere here, view code. And yeah, here we have an example. Um, I don't like this particular example because this is using, uh, this isn't using an API like Open API. So that's what I would rather do here. I'd like to use the Open API. So now, um, I'm not exactly sure how we do this with other models, but I definitely know um, for uh, well, I guess we maybe use Promptflow for that, but. Uh, for OpenAI, you literally use the OpenAI SDK to, to, to talk to Azure's models. Uh, but for other ones, I'm not exactly sure, like for Claude or Haiku. So we'll just say um, Azure AI Studio, uh, uh, Claude. Do they have Claude on here? I believe that they do. And so that would be one that we want to take a look at here. And so maybe we'd have to do that through prom Promptflow. Azure AI SDK, this, let's take a look at this. Okay. So see here, they're talking about like, okay, use OpenAI and it's as simple as that. But what if you're not using OpenAI, right? What if you want to use a model other than that? Uh, so powerful access for leading providers Okay, but that's if you're doing Azure AI inference, which means probably one that you're running constantly, I would think. I'm not sure, but we can do GPT-40 here. So I'm wondering if uh, Azure AI inference is now the, the standardized one for all of them. So let's take a look here and see what we have. Okay, so that's how you do it. All right, so maybe that's what we'll, we'll go ahead and try to use here today. Um, so I need some kind of environment to work with. Um, I'm going to go use Azure ML Studio here today, if that's okay with everybody. You do not need to use Azure Machine Learning Studio. You can use your local machine, whatever you want. I'm just trying to get as much practice with you here using things uh, like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here today. I'm going to create myself a new workspace. And this will just be, I don't know what the other one was called. 
Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say AZ coding or AZ ML. I can go ahead and hit review create. It doesn't like something here. AZ ML. There we go, review create. And we'll get our environment up here in just a moment. I'm waiting for this crate to finish. It's initializing deployment, so we'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, we'll wait for this to finish deploying, okay? All right, let's go to the resource here. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch Studio. And from here on the left-hand side, I'm making my way over to computer. I mean, I just want a notebook so we can do it here as well. Um, it's interesting, we also have model catalog here, um, but you know, there's just multiple ways of doing the exact same thing. So we'll go ahead and create ourselves compute here. Uh, Andrew one is totally fine. I just want CPUs. I want the lowest cost possible um, from all options. As we're not doing anything crazy here. So we use our standard DS, DS1 version two. Idle shutdown after 60 minutes is fine with me. We'll go ahead and review create. I'll go ahead and create that. So now I'm just waiting for um, this environment to provision. I go compute down here and we'll just wait for that, okay? All right, so that is now running. We're gonna go ahead and click on Jupyter Lab, and that's going to bring up a Jupyter Lab environment. So we'll just give that a moment uh, to get going there. There we go. So um, we're not doing anything crazy here. So I'm gonna go with um, it's SDK version two. I'm not sure what the, the two is for. I'm gonna just check, uh, uh, click Python IP kernel. So we're just using standard Python here. But let's make our way over to that code uh, over here. And I'm gonna just grab this link. As you folks might be wondering, how do you get it later on? Cause I will, I'll take this one and I'll actually put it in the, um, I will place it in the, um, uh, uh, you know, what you might call it. Um, and I will actually want Markdown there. That's fine. I'm just going to switch that out here to Markdown. And then I'll bring this one up. This one is actually code. And let's see if we can get this to work. APIs are always changing, folks. You got to keep up with them. Okay. I was just doing this three months ago, and it's a completely different experience. So here it says you can use the project clients to configure uh, stuff here. So we'll go ahead. We have chat completion embeddings client. We want to do chat completion here today. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this code. Okay, and actually we just happen to be using GPT-4.0, so that's perfect for us. Um, but you know, again, the reason we're not using OpenAI, we're using this one, is that this one uh, can utilize multiple multiple ones here. Um, here we need the project. Uh, okay, where does that come from? So we need to bring in this. Mm. Okay, so we'll try this one second here. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this onto a single line like this here. And we'll run. Okay, so that's good. And then I'll bring this down a line. Create a project in client code. We already have a project, right? So we don't need another project but we need to load a project. So here it says project your connection string, create a project in the client code. Mm. Copy the project connection st uh, string from the overview page. So I'm, I don't think it's creating one. It's saying like you already have one and so you're bringing it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna paste this in here. And so if we go back over to, um, uh, uh, the AI playground, if we go to overview here, we have a connection string right here, okay? So I'm gonna bring that in here. I'm gonna dump it in like that. Um, that looks fine, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. It says, oh, um, I didn't import those. So we'll go back over to this and we'll bring this here and I'll bring this down. Apologize for the fonts, I just realized it was too small. We'll bring it down, we'll hit play. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and hit run here. Now, we didn't authenticate in any way, so I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work, but uh, we'll find out here in a second. I'm assuming this is not gonna work, but if it does, that's great. 
oh, it worked. Okay, great. I just thought there'd be more. Like, there was, like, a pop-up or something. But maybe because we're in here, it's totally fine. Um, yeah, it just worked. That's great. Okay, so here we are getting back output. So that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and just clear this out here. One second. Um, and your string. Uh, this will just be basic. And I just want to go ahead and clear all cells. I don't want to run everything. I just want to clear the cells. Uh, I'll just stop here. Clear all outputs. There we go. Clear all outputs. There we go. And so I'll go ahead and download this one. So this is another one that's useful for our repo here. Now, I didn't do one for, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, this is Azure AI Foundry. I didn't do one for uh, Google just because the code was so straightforward. And I mean, they gave us the code, so I wasn't going to just change it. But this one's a little bit different, so we'll have to do a bit more work here. Oh, sorry. You know what? I'm still recording this video. Oh, no, it's not the video I want. It's what it's the file. <laughs> Let's try to name the file that I, I uh, the video I was recording right here. And so we'll bring this into Azure AI Foundry. I'm going to rename this here. So it's just basic. Okay, and so now we have our two. So we'll go ahead and just Azure AI Foundry. I don't want all the stuff in here, though. I told it to go away. Um, I mean, the first one's here. That's not a big deal. I just want, didn't want to make sure that connection string was in here. I'm going to just clear this out. Clear all cell outputs. There we go. And that's good. So we'll go ahead. Uh, I don't need all caps. I think I just hit the caps key by accident. AI, AI Foundry. Um, so that is good. We'll go ahead and save that. And so that is, um, the easiest way to get working with Azure AI Foundry. Uh, that model's deployed. I'm not going to undeploy it. You can, if you are uncomfortable with that. Um, but if you want to get rid of that, you absolutely can. Um, so you could go ahead and delete that. I suppose I could delete it or un undeploy it. Hmm. Where is it? How do we undeploy this? Edit. So usually it was like a de delete button. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me go to the model catalog. Yeah, that's not very clear. I'm going to go up to uh, maybe Azure AI Foundry. I'm going to go up a level into a project. I really don't like this interface. I, I prefer the, well, I mean, it's very similar to Azure AI Studio and OpenAI Studio, but I can't say I'm a huge fan of this. I'm going to go back over to models here. What if we go to data? I don't think there's any data. Yeah, it's models. Checkbox. How do I undeploy a model? Okay. Azure AI Studio. I'm going to write Studio because it's uh, undeploy a model. Select deploy model page, then select deploy me one delete and delete it. Uh-huh. Deploy model page. What? To delete a deployment within the language studio. No, that's language studio. Um, yeah, Azure AF Portal Foundry, deploying models. How do you undeploy? Delete. Okay, let me go find it, okay? This is typical Azure for you. I found it. What you do is you click into the model, and then you can delete it there. So I'm just going to delete just in case people are worried, okay? And so now that model is deleted. I'm going to keep Azure AI Foundry, this project, around. We'll use it again. For Azure ML, um, I'm going to get rid of that instance that I'm running. I could just stop it if I wanted to, but... Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to compute here, so I could stop it. I gotta just delete it here. It's not that it's not that much work to spin one up when we need one. And so there you go. That is working with Azure AI Foundry at the most basic way programmatically. And so I'll see you in the next one. Okay, ciao.